So hello and welcome to another episode of our syllabus and in this episode I'm gonna show you I'm gonna tell you the working of a boost converter I know I have shown that in my one of my previous videos but there people get confused because of that extremely complicated circuit so today I will show you the simplest possible circuit of a boost converter I'm gonna take the simplest classical circuit of a boost converter and add no more extra components and show you guys how how it works and I'm 100% sure that after this video the concept of boost converter will be clear to you so let's get started So let's start with the most classical circuit of a boost converter which I have discussed in my previous video how it works it is using a diagram now I will draw the same diagram and according to that I will make a circuit on breadboard with no extra components so here we go hope you guys can see it I'll try to draw a bigger diagram So this is the most simplest classical circuit diagram of a boost converter. Now I'll show you my components up in here and just make this circuit and show you guys how it works. So guys, how to make an inductor? If you guys don't know that, then check out my this video link up in here uh, in the cards above. Uh, there I have shown you how you can make an inductor like this. So here we have my inductor and in the place of switch I am going to use a, a MOSFET Now why MOSFET because this is better than a BJT which I have used in my previous video So this is going to be my switch ok I am going to show you how you can use a MOSFET as switch in my another video That is not in the scope of this video So I am just going to discuss quite basics how, how to put this thing as a switch ok So here we go here I have my capacitor, this is a quite powerful capacitor, uh, 2200 microfarad at 50 volts, so here we go. And here we have a diode, this is a fast recovery diode, uh, now why we need a fast diode? Because we, are, we will be dealing with higher frequencies, right? How do you guys know about this? So how does it work? At first, from our 12 volt source, normal current goes through the inductor, then through the diode and gets stored in the capacitor. And when we close the switch, then we are basically running the current through this f current through f current through here, then up in here, and then to the ground. And so we are basically short circuiting the inductor. Now, while in this stage, a huge amount of charge is stored in the inductor, and when we again open the switch, this potential plus the potential while we're providing through the input. The both get stored in the capacitor and our output, output voltage increases and to achieve this we have to open and close the switch very fast so for this we use PWM signal and what is a PWM signal you may ask so let's show you what a PWM signal is so this is a PWM signal this is called the duty cycle the on time this is the on time and this is the off time so this on time and off time if they are same then the pwm signal has a duty cycle of 50 percent now we can vary this duty cycle like this let me show you the frequency remains constant but we actually let me show you this is the increased duty cycle So the frequency remains constant but we can change the duty cycle and that is the on time and off time. So like this our MOSFET turns on in this stage and turns off in this stage. So basically when it is turned on as I've shown you the charges get stored in the inductor and when it is turned off the charge gets transferred into the capacitor and like that our voltage increases. So 
So let's build the circuit. For that, I need a fresh, new, clean, white breadboard. 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 Many people get confused by looking at non-white breadboard with extra idle components connected in. So I'm going to take a new breadboard and connect all the components up in here with no extra thing. So let's get started. Now see, I made it according to this classical circuit diagram okay now i will show you how to use this mosfet as a switch so see i put the exact same circuit see here is the input so here is my input this is plus and this rail is ground so you can see this is ground this is ground and this is the input this goes through the inductor as up in here goes through the inductor to the switch and here's our switch here's through the inductor through the second terminal of the mosfet i'll show you how to configure this mosfet as a switch so here are a couple of two resistors uh, to control the pwm signal of the mosfet just ignore that i'll show you later on just we have this switch up in ground so this is the ground you can see these two terminals are acting at the switch terminals like this and this so here are the two terminals up in there then through the inductor goes through the positive of the diode and through the inductor it goes through the positive of the diode this is the diode and the negative of the diode is connected to the capacitor positive and you can see the negative of the diode up in there connected to the capacitor positive up in there and this is the capacitor negative as this and this goes to the ground so this goes to the ground this is the total circuit you can see and I have just connected two different LEDs here with a 1.2 resistor for the output and here in the input with another resistor just I have put two extra LEDs if we draw the circuit then it will look like something like this up in here one LED this another one LED And at the output, there is another LED like this. So this is the complete circuit. If you ignore these two LEDs, then we have the classical boost converter circuit up in here. Now, how this transistor acts as the switch? Now let's replace this switch with the transistor. Now let's see. We have our transistor. Up this is the MOSFET. This is the first terminal. This is the second and this is the third one so this is our transistor so we are acting this as the ground like this and this one is this so we are just connecting this like that uh, here there we go now this is the configuration of this mosfet the pin 2 and 3 the 2 is this and 3 is ground so and this is called the gate or g uh, the transistor the mosfet usually have gate source and drain but we are ignoring that because that is the topic for another video so here is our gate and in this gate we have to provide our pwm signal that is i've shown you this is the pwm signal this is with 50 percent duty cycle there we go and so we have to put a PWM signal here. I have just provide two resistor to limit the gate current. A pull down resistor to set the FN voltage to zero. I have just ignored those and just imagine that we are just giving this gate the PWM signal through this resistor. If you don't provide a resistor, that also will be fine, but that can damage the MOSFET because of high current. But I don't think that will do because I am gonna use Arduino to provide PWM signal. So hope you have got the circuit now and let's program the Arduino to provide PWM signal in this thing. But first of all let's put a voltage on let's see how it does and what's the output, what's the initial output voltage when the MOSFET is turned off. So I'm gonna provide power to our circuit. So there is guys 
this multimeter is connected to the output of this so I'm gonna turn on the power supply and see what the initial voltage is oh, 3, 2, 1, go! there we go do you see that the LED is lit up the maximum voltage it's 10.34 volts because my power supply though it is rated 12 volts but it is actually providing 10 point around 10.7 volts because I think it is gonna die very soon so can you see that output voltage is exactly 10.34 volts now we will configure our Arduino to produce the PWM signal here is my Arduino Uno I am gonna use the Arduino Uno quickly open the Arduino IDE there we go let's quickly open a new file and here it is so if you don't know for a quick information let me show you let me tell you that in Arduino so in Arduino hope you can see this little tilted symbol something there it is in 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11 and so on these pins are actually capable of producing PWM signal so we will just use this third pin up in here to produce our first PWM signal so let's write the code according to that we have to write the function analog right now here is the turning point the this can take values up to zero uh, values from zero to 255 so as i've shown you the 255 means 100 percent duty cycle that means that is not a pwm signal because it is just constant turn on kind of signal we need to use a 50% duty cycle so we are going to use the 255 the half up to 55 that will be our 50% duty cycle the voltage is always as you know the voltage from things of Arduino is always 5 volts so we are going to use 50% duty cycle so we want 255 divided by 2 now what is what it is I don't know there you go it says 127.5 but I am gonna put 127 okay. now this is exactly 50% duty cycle PWM signal so let's upload it let's see come on what the f ah finally it is uploaded now I'm just gonna use this pin to plug in this resistor okay hope you can see the output voltage right around 10.3 volts now now i'm just gonna connect my mosfet gate to the arduino to see uh, to send the pwm signal so that it can turn on and off rapidly with 50 percent duty cycle now let's do it there you go i can listen to the switching frequency now and you can see oh, wow you can see the right around 23 volts so that worked hope the mosfets are not alone now piece of sh oh, what was it i have to use my thermocouple now i would like to use my thermocouple to monitor the mosfet temperature now you can see it right around 39 degrees now the MOSFET is on and temperatures is also well and you can see again the voltage is around 10.3 volts at the output so I'm just gonna plug the MOSFET to turn on and off rapidly okay so 3, 2, 1, go wow you can see how fast it rises to 24.5 or 6 volts it's insane and it's up on 25 volts and it is still increasing well why it is increasing then well i'm not sure the temperature is jumping around you can see 22 21 you can see it's jumping around oh, <laughs> you can see the temperature is rising oh it's again rising is up to 90 degrees C I need a fan I have 
connected the fan to my input. Now you can see it's 21, 22. It's again jumping around. Now let's see what's the frequency we are getting from our Arduino uh, PWM. So what the f well, I don't know, but the frequency of what I am getting is only 490 hertz. Which is not enough. Actually, the higher is the frequency, higher will be the efficiency of our boost converter. So, I don't think Arduino is a good option to be used for generating the PWM signal for operating a MOSFET. Hmm? Well, which also says the pin 5 and 6 have a higher frequency uh, of something around 980 hertz. That's near to 1 kilohertz. Yeah. So I need to reprogram the Arduino, just change the pin from pin 3 to pin 5 or 6. Well, I've just increased the frequency from 490Hz to 980Hz, which is just the double, okay? And now we can see the voltages are quite constant, uh, like before it is it was jumping around, okay? Yeah, I don't know if it works. Now let's see what happens if we increase the DD cycle. I will like to change this 127 to 150 and upload it and it's right around 25 now let's see increase the video cycle a bit more i would like to change this to 200 to load it now let's see what happens obviously the voltage doesn't increase uh, either but the temperature it's it's up 61 degrees i don't think this much video cycle is necessary and it's right around again uh, 34 but unlike previously, when I am using 490 hertz of frequency, the voltages are jumping around 20, I mean 19 to 22, 23 volts, but now it is quite constant, you can see. Uh, 25, around 25, it's still increasing a little bit. The temperatures are increasing still. You guys have understood whatever I've shown you. So this is how a classical boost converter works. Uh, and the drawback of this a classical circuit is it doesn't have any feedback so when you put a load it doesn't I mean it doesn't care about what the voltage is for a small load the voltage will be, will be more but the, for bigger load the voltage will be less because the pulse width will be constant the duty cycle will be constant for that we add a feedback to our oscillator stage and, and the PWM stage to increase the duty cycle whenever we attach a bigger load that's what the necessity of a variable DV cycle of a PWM signal. So, guys, hope if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, thumbs up for the opposite time, uh, do share and subscribe. That's all for today. Uh, this is Malhar, you are watching Arusilva Sarah. I'm signing off.